Okay, so I'm going to show you the last couple examples in Section 5. Uh, I have these set up in your notes. It's, uh, if you've got your notes, you can flip near the end of them or jump ahead to that screen if you want to look at them. Uh, but the, the two sample problems we're going to look at are on page 596. Uh, it's a reaction involving carbon monoxide and water. So we're going to try and find some equilibrium uh, values here. Now, again, you can follow along in the book, but I figure I'd show you at least one here uh, that you can sort of think about it. Uh, we read the question. It simply says carbon monoxide reacts with steam uh, to produce carbon dioxide and hydrogen at 700 Kelvin. The equilibrium constant is 5.10. So we need to know, sort of remember the back of our minds, K equals 5.10. Calculate the equilibrium concentrations of all species if one mole of each compound is mixed in a one liter container. So really what we're going to do is we, we truly want to set up a, a, an ice reaction, a rice reaction here. So all, everything is one mole per one liter. So initially, I've got one molar there, one molar there, one molar there, one molar there. So now, Next thing I figure out is, all right, the change. Are they going to gain X or are they going to lose X? I don't, you know, I don't know what, um, you know, what's going to happen here. So here's what we got to figure out. We've got to compare Q versus K. So remember what Q is. It is just taking all of the initial concentrations of pressure. K is taking the concentrations of pressures at equilibrium. So K is 5.10, so what we need to figure out is what is Q? So what is the value here given those initial amounts? Well, actually this one's kind of simple here. Um, just put this off to the side. Q is equal to concentrations of the products. So 1.0 times 1.0 divided by 1.0 times 1.0. So, Q is equal to 1. Q is less than K. Therefore, what that means is if Q is less than K, okay, and this is the important uh, piece to remember, because uh, if, if you don't remember it this way, you're going to uh, do all the shifts backwards. Okay, so Q is less than K. That means the shift is going to occur to the right. Okay. So we come back up here to the top. That now tells us what's plus X and what's minus X. So the reactants are going to lose X. The products are going to gain X. At equilibrium, we're going to have 1 minus X, 1 minus X, 1 plus x and 1 plus x. I remember the original question says uh, calculate the equilibrium concentrations of all species. So k is equal to 5.10 which is equal to concentrations of the products. 1.0 minus x times 1.0 minus x divided by, sorry, plus x for the products, 1.0 plus x, divided by 1.0 minus x. And again, if you recognize this, save yourself some time, 1.0 minus x squared. All right, so here's what we got to solve for. 5.10 equals 1.0 plus x squared, divided by 1.0 minus x squared. Right. So that's what they're setting up there. Um, in the bottom of page 597, they're going through that example. Uh, what once you do is obviously you could solve for x. We go through this process. We take the square root. We take the square root. So the square root of 5.10 is equal to 1.0 plus x divided by 1.0 minus x. And you can obviously follow around along and realize that X is equal to 0.387 molar. So remember, the, the final answer they want is not what solving for X is. What they want you to do is to solve for the final concentration. So now you come back up here 
And now we know what the value for x is, 0.387. So now we can solve for the two products, okay, which were um, carbon dioxide and hydrogen. And we can also solve for the two reactants, which were carbon monoxide and water. So in the case of carbon monoxide and water, their concentrations are equal to 1.0 minus 0.387 molar, and the concentration of CO2 and hydrogen gas is equal to 1.0 plus 0.387 molar. So you can see what those answers are, uh, and again, they carried out, obviously I didn't write all the decimals down, but you should because that's how much information that they give us. Uh, we've got all those decimals, so we can carry those all the way out. And you can see what those molarities are. We have a molarity for carbon uh, monoxide and hydrogen or water of 0.613 molar. And then we have a molarity for the two products as 1.387 molar. Okay? So that's basically our setup here. Now the thing you got to recognize is we don't have any coefficients yet, so the x's are, are just simply x. Uh, if we have coefficients, then obviously we need to incorporate those in. Uh, what I'll have you do is um, you can pause this if you want to. Uh, on the next page, this is the reaction on page 598. Uh, so I will have you um, follow through in the book. Okay. I want you to kind of look at that one for a little bit and then have you pause it because we come back for that. I'm going to quickly run through uh, a couple more examples of homework problems in the book uh, to see if you can do those and uh, you know check your answers and, and so forth. So uh, pause this one right here. Uh, you work on this, follow through in the book, and then when you come back, you'll see what uh, what I'm going to have you do next. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple just uh, Q versus K calculations here that you can practice on. Uh, you can follow along here and then make sure you understand what's going on. So problem number 34A on page 615. So if you need to, you can pause me here until you get to there. So number 34A on page 615, they have a reaction of NO uh, reacting to form nitrogen gas and oxygen gas. And the question simply asks, for which of the following sets of conditions is it at equilibrium? For those that are not, in which direction will it shift? So what we've got to figure out is, well, what do we have initially? Initially, we have 0 0.010 um, NO. We have, and again, these are pressures, so we can put atmospheres. Uh, we have 0.11 atmospheres of nitrogen gas and 2.0 uh, atmospheres of uh, oxygen gas. Okay. So uh, what we have here is we simply got to compare Q versus K. So in, back in the question, K is 2.4 times 10 to the third. So what we have to do is compare Q versus K. So here's our initial amounts. So Q is going to be equal to 2.0 times 0.11 divided by 0 0.010 squared. Don't forget about coefficients. When we solve for Q, we get 2.2 times 10 to the third. So 2.2 times 10 to the third is less than 2.4 times 10 to the third. So Q is less than K. Therefore, we're going to get a shift to the right. We have a little bit less product in the beginning than what we should have. So we're going to see a shift right. Okay. So that's all you got to do when I talk about that. Um, Simply, which way is it going to shift? Take the initial numbers, set up in a Q, just like you would set up K, solve for what you get. Now, if this was a longer problem where they want to know amounts in the end, what Q will help you figure out is what's positive X and what's minus X. Uh, let's look at another one here. This is number 36 okay, at the end of the chapter. It's a little bit longer equation. We've got uh, ethanol uh, in a reaction here. We're making water, so this is uh, an organic reaction, ethanol acetic acid. Uh, ethyl acetate is the product. 
that uh, acetates. Uh, we'll talk about those uh, later in terms of what those chemicals are. They also tell us K is equal to 2.2. So again here in 36 they're simply asking will the concentrations of water increase, decrease, or remain the same as equilibrium is established. So they're simply asking what's going to happen to water? Is water going to go up or go down? So we can simply say by shift which way it's going to shift what will happen there. All right, so again, these are our initial amounts, so let's compare Q versus K. Q is going to be equal to, uh, everything has a coefficient of 1, so we're going to be 0.22 times 0 0.10 divided by 0 0.010 times 0 0.010. Okay. In this case, we've got concentration, so products divided by reactants. When we solve here, we're going to get 220, 220, not 222. Now, 220 is a lot greater than 2.2. Q is a lot greater than K. Well, if Q is a lot greater than K, we're going to get a shift left, which what that means is the concentration of H2O is going to decrease. Because if we're shifting left, we're going to be losing water. Okay. Again, we're not asking for how much, so we can stop here. They just want to know what's our reference point in terms of how much it's going to gain or lose. Okay. So there's a couple examples dealing with solving for K and Q and, and being able to identify the shift. What I've got next is I'll just show two problems here. Uh, dealing with an actual rice calculation where we need to figure out not only which way does it shift, but what are the final amounts. So we'll pause here, kind of get set up, and then you can watch those. All right, page 616, number 40. What we have here is we have a reaction involving uh, sulfur uh, that's just basically changing its state uh, from one form of a gas to another. So they're saying a uh, sample is placed in an empty container initial pressure of one atmosphere where it decomposes to S2. At equilibrium, the partial pressure, pressure of S8 is 0.25 atmospheres. Calculate the value for K. So here's our reaction. S8 changing to 4S2. We're going to set up our rice calculation. So in the question, it says we initially have one atmosphere of S8 they make no reference to SO2, so we've got nothing. They tell us then in the question, at equilibrium, the partial pressure of S8 is 0.25 atmospheres. Well, a couple things we realize here. One, it, there's nothing, no products in the beginning, so it's got to shift right. We'd expect that to happen. Second thing we notice here, we had a decrease, so we're expecting the S8 lost X. Now we can do one better than that. We know that amount of X is 0.75 atmospheres. Now let's come over here to S2. S2 obviously gained a certain amount. Here's where we need to be careful. It did not gain S, X. It gained 4X because of our coefficients. So if sulfur gained, S2 gained 4x, it really gained 4 times 0.75, which is equal to 3. Okay. So really it gained 3.0 atmospheres. So at equilibrium, S8 has 0.25 atmospheres and 4S2 has 3 atmospheres. So, you know, this, this change step there's kind of a mole ratio comparison there, right? Coefficients 4 over 1, 1 over 4. You know, we, we definitely there's a relationship. Okay, so here's our equilibrium amounts. So at equilibrium, that's how much we have of the two reactants. So then the question finally ends up asking, what is the value of calculate Kp? Okay. Well, Kp is equal to the pressures of the products. So that's S2, 3.0 atmospheres to the fourth power coefficient divided by 
0.25 atmospheres to the first power. Okay, so again, we don't even need to put an exponent of 1. So 3.0 to the fourth divided by 0.25 is 3.2 times 10 to the second, or 320. So that's a fairly large K for that uh, for a reaction. Okay. So again, we, we kind of were given some of that information. Uh, we we basically pull out what we need out of the question, set it up, uh, and, and do some algebra. Last one here is I'm going to have do, uh, it's actually 46. So we'll do 46 and talk about it here in a second. Okay, number 46. Here's the reaction. We got hydrogen and iodine making HI. Read the question. Uh, particular temperature, K equals 1.00 times 10 to the second. In the experiment, one mole of hydrogen gas, one mole of iodine, and one mole of HI are introduced into a one liter container. Calculate the cal concentrations of all, everything at equilibrium. So we've got one mole. We look quickly. Oh, one mole per liter. That's nice. We got one molar. So we go through our setup. We have one molar HI in the beginning, one molar iodine, one molar HI. Now, our problem becomes, what's, what's going to be plus or minus X here at the chain? You know, how much is going to change? Are we going to get H and I to increase or H and I to decrease? Okay. Well, let's do a quick Q versus K. Uh, we said K... K is equal to 100, right? 1 times 10 to the second. Q is going to be equal to concentrations of the products. 1.0 squared, right, from HI, divided by 1.0 times 1.0. Hmm. 1.0 squared divided by 1.0 times 1.0. A lot of 1.0s. Q is equal to 1.0. Q is less than K. So again, you got to pause for a second there. What does it tell you when Q is less than K? Because okay, you're going to want to think about that. That means the reactants are going to change into products. So now we know reactants changing to products. Minus X, minus X. Now that we kind of got this out of the way, we can say then we're going to produce 2X of HI. So at equilibrium, the amounts we're going to have are 1.0 minus x, 1.0 minus x, and 1.0 plus 2x. Reading the question, again, just to make sure we're still on the same page, it's wanting to know, calculate the concentrations at equilibrium. So we got to solve for E. So k is equal to 1.00 times 10 to the second. So that is equal to concentrations of the products. So 1.0 plus 2x squared, remember, coefficient of 2, divided by 1.0 minus x times 1.0 minus x. So we can get that x squared. There's our equation. 100 equals 1.0 plus 2x squared divided by 1.0 minus x. So now all we got to do is a little bit of algebra. So we think about this 1.0 plus 2x squared divided by 1 minus x squared. Square root, square root, 10 equals 1.0 plus 2x divide by 1.0 minus x. Now, you can figure out the algebra for the most part on your own. At some point, you get, should get to 12.0 x equals 9. Therefore, x equals 0.75 molar. Okay? So hopefully you get to that point. Now, if that's the case, we now just know what the value for x is all the way back up here in the in the rice calculation okay. so what we have now is if we want to know the final concentrations 
concentration of H hydrogen is equal to the concentration of iodine, which is equal to 1.0 minus X. Okay? So 1.0 minus 0.75 equals 0.25 molar. Uh, again, pay attention to zeros. There may have been two there. I forgot already. And then the concentration of HI is going to be 1.0 plus 2x. So it's going to be 1.0 plus 1.5. We're going to end up with 2.5 molar. So in the very beginning, we started out with one molar of hydrogen gas, one molar of iodine gas, one molar of HI, and after they react, we end up with 0.25 molars of H, 0.25 molars of I, and 2.5 molars of HI. That's it for the rice calculations. Okay. So hopefully you saw a few there. You know you're working on the homework, and uh, we can we'll pick up some more of these in class.